How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today we're going to be taking a look at Wagstaff. So this is a character that's currently available in a special beta branch of Don't Starve Hamlet. It is exclusive to the Hamlet DLC and the single player version of the game. So Wagstaff is not a character you're going to find in Don't Starve Together. You have to enter a special code in at the moment to actually opt into the beta branch for Hamlet and the code you can find either in the most recent news announcement for Don't Starve Hamlet or I'll also include it in the description below this video. So what is Wagstaff all about? This is a character that has quite a bit of previous history in the game. Uh, he's considered to be the owner, I believe, of the factory that made Voxola radios, and the Voxola radio itself plays a pretty big part in the lore of Don't Starve. As a character at the moment, uh, he has his own unique crafting tab. That's what the great inventor perk here is about. He is nearsighted, which means that anything past, I would say, about one third of the screen is blurred out unless you're wearing special equipment that he has particular to his character. And lastly, he has a delicate stomach. Those last two things are detriments to the fact that he's a great inventor. And in terms of the delicate stomach, it means that he takes three damage per raw food item eaten, which is a little bit reminiscent of Warley except the Wagstaff doesn't come with his own crockpot, obviously, and can eat items of food that are cooked. It's just the very raw stuff that bothers him. It doesn't actually need to be prepared in any sort of meal. So with that introduction out of the way, as I usually do here, I'm going to be showcasing this character's abilities. So to get started with, here I am in game as Wagstaff, and this is a world that I set up specifically with the purpose of demonstrating some of the stuff that is available to Wagstaff. So the first thing you'll notice when you start playing this character, obviously, is the fact that most of your screen is blurred out here. And it's kind of funny, too, because instead of examining uh, the buildings and whatnot, anything that is sort of blurred out gets a unique text. Like it says examine eel, examine work, uh, work in progress plant holder. Uh, examine rabbit when you hover over the house. This piggy is considered a crumbling icon. Uh, and this is corrected by a starting item called the Spectagoggles, which you can equip, and now the uh, world will become clear. See? So the big downside to uh, Wagstaff's myopia is the fact that he is going to be much more reliant on his own special headgear if you don't want to view the world like this in this blurred out state and that means it restricts the headgear that you can use so that's a pretty big downside uh, but you know right from the start of the game you're going to come with the goggles uh, available to equip and they last for 10 days I believe. They sort of slowly reduce in durability as you wear them and they also help you identify dangers and unique areas of interest which I'll go into in a minute. But first let's take a look at the tinkering tab. So this is Wagstaff's unique tab with all the new items that are available to Wagstaff. These are exclusive items. They're not available to any other characters. And they're what makes him a great inventor, right? So we've got the Spectre goggles here, one gold, one pigskin. Uh, we already saw what they can do a little bit, but I'll go into some of their more advanced features in, in later. We also have the Infro goggles. These allow you to see at night and they have this sort of heat vision to them so anything that is sort of a living being that is not cold-blooded and this is a really unique feature um, because clay has actually realized that you know snakes are cold-blooded so you will not see snakes uh, light up like these pigs here do or that that crow there uh, and, and once again this lasts i think two days you can't refuel it but it works Kind of similar to the models, right? You can move around and everything. And uh, like obviously the screen is a little bit darker, but it also helps you see enemies. And it also gets rid of uh, Wagstaff's myopia problem where the screen is blurred out. So those are the infro goggles. They really do come in handy, but uh, the price might be, might be seen to be a little bit expensive, especially in Hamlet, where getting access to gold can be a little bit more difficult. The second unique item that Wagstaff has available is called the Visor. This is actually pretty cheap and it functions very similar to a, a football helmet. Uh, in terms of 
you know, its functionality, it is a little bit better. It protects Wagstaff for 85% of incoming damage as opposed to 80%, which is what a standard football helmet would do. And it also has more durability than a football helmet. Now, don't quote me exactly on this, but it is roughly 33% more durable. Roughly, very roughly. So it is a better version of a football helmet in those aspects. But the downside, of course, is that it removes part of your vision here on the side of the screen. So you only get about two thirds, maybe, of your usual uh, screen real estate while using this. The upside, of course, is that the visor, unlike the Specta goggles, do not decrease in durability simply from using them. They actually need to take damage. So this is sort of a guaranteed way of always being able to view at least two thirds of the world without needing to like uh, account for Wagstaff's myopia. Now there have been reports on the forums I've seen of some people having difficulty viewing the screen when it's blurred out. Apparently this can cause migraines in some individuals and in most cases, you're not going to have to worry about that but there is an ongoing campaign to have an option added to the menu from what I've seen that allows the players to turn off that effect or turn it into a different sort of uh, overlay, uh, perhaps something similar to disabling screen shake for bosses. Until that time though, there is really no reason that in the vast majority of cases you cannot use something that just clears up the screen such as his specta goggles, the infra goggles, the visor, stuff like that. The one exception is that Wagstaff does not have a suitable headgear replacement yet for the gas mask. Of course there's also a mod that you can install that uh, disables the screen blur effect from Wagstaff's myopia. So you have a lot of options if you're one of the people affected by that screen blurring effect. Okay, the next item I want to cover here in the tinkering tab is called the Fry Focals. Now these are kind of interesting. They turn the world into a sepia toned sort of color palette. Uh, and in addition to that, they can fire off fireballs. So if you don't have anything in your hand, I've noticed that most weapons will cause you to fail to do this, but you have to remove a weapon from your hand and then you can force attack, for example, to attack this pig. Now, from what I understand, the fireball is a little bit better than the type of fire damage that you would do simply by using something like a fire staff. Like that would be the obvious tool to use in most situations like this, especially since when I fired that fireball here, uh, it took away 10% of the durability of the Fry Focals. The Fry Focals are an item that have infinite durability providing you don't use them. So once again, they are another good substitute for the Specta Goggles as they get rid of the screen blur effect. Uh, but they can only be used 10 times. They deal more damage than something like a Fire Staff would. But at the same time, the usefulness of it, I think, can really be called into question. I've played a couple of, I'd say about six hours now as Wagstaff, and I've never found the ability to fire off a fireball to be that useful, especially given the amount of damage that it deals and the kind of the cost associated with the fry focals. It does require a red gem, which is pretty much the equivalent cost that you would see making a fire staff. And of course, on top of the red gem, you're going to also need to make the speckle, specta goggles, which requires gold and pigskin. That's of course true of most of these additional items. They pretty much all require the Specta goggles as the base item to craft. Now we get into the more interesting parts. We've got a telepad here and a telebrella, and they work together. So the telepad requires a gear, which can be a little bit trickier to acquire in Hamlet, but uh, since Wagstaff is also available in other worlds, uh, in other versions of DLC like Shipwrecked. I mean, I haven't played Shipwrecked yet, but I can only imagine this telepad is going to be amazing in Shipwrecked because it allows you to jump between telepads without, um, with just the telebrella here. So what I'm going to do for this example, just to briefly show you how it works, and then I'm going to get into something a little bit more advanced here. Uh, back to the original Specta goggles. I'm going to Equip the uh, Telebrella and then right click when it says use gadget. Now there's a difference between standing here off of this telepad and standing on it. When you're standing on the telepad, the little light lights up. If you're standing off of it and you use the gadget, you'll teleport to the nearest uh, telepad. If you're standing on it, you'll teleport to another telepad that is the closest. So here you'll see I jumped over to this one. So it's really, really cool. It's a lot like the telelocator focus. Um, except you can actually use it 
uh, it doesn't cost that much to use because the Tela Umbrella, it only requires an electrical doodad and a pretty power cell. Now, obviously the pretty power cell could get questionably expensive when you start running out of flowers. And then once you have that umbrella, it lasts 10 times. And what, are, what I'm going to do here, I'm gonna show you because I have another one set up across the world. I'm going to jump over to this other town. So right now I'm in the town with a slanty shanty in it. I'm gonna use the gadget here. And now you'll notice I'm in the town with the royal family, the, the pig queen in it right here. So uh, obviously you can see a lot of use for this. There is a limit to the range that this device has. For example, uh, I would say I'm kind of maxing it out here in terms of the range. So right there is the other teleporter. Maybe you can see it. So you get an idea of how far apart they can be. But as you might imagine, this is going to be so very cool in Shipwrecked because you've got all these little islands and now you can just sort of jump like halfway across the world. I'm not sure it's quite halfway across the world, but but at least I would say a third of the way across any world uh, with very little investment because once you've built the telepads, you don't need to build them again. You only have to worry about making another telebrella and the telebrella does not require any stats like the telelocator staff does, right? It's not costing me sanity to use this. It does not costing me health or anything like that. So it's overall quite affordable and it, I, I think it's my favorite part of this character so far. I th think it's my favorite unique item, the, my favorite invention that he has. I think it has the most potential upside. Uh, there just seems to be so much that I could use it for that I haven't really tried yet. And it's one of the things that's making me want to play this character more is to really be able to experiment with these two gadgets here in different worlds. The last invention in his tinkering tab is called the Thumper. Uh, this is relatively affordable as well. It requires one gear, two hammers, and a flint. And when once you place it, it's placed as a structure. You can't move it once placed. It also doesn't start on fire. Uh, but you can turn it on. As you can see here, it has infinite durability, so you can do this as many times as you want. And a good thump, you'll notice it clears out a nice square area of all structures and plants that can be uprooted by a traditional stomp. So this is especially useful for things like farming trees, you know, because this is the, I mean, I haven't really tried it yet, but you can see the potential here to really knock down entire forests of trees that you plant around the thumper. And since it doesn't require fuel or anything like that, it's very affordable. Uh, the downside, of course, is that you're not only going to be able to use this really for trees, so it has limited scope in terms of its usefulness. I guess you could go ahead and plant twigs and then knock them down instead of picking them. It might be a little bit faster, kind of doubt it. Uh, but it's mostly for knocking down trees, as far as I can tell. And it's a very interesting and appreciated invention, even if it's not quite as huge, in my opinion, as the Tala Umbrella and its respective focus. Because chopping down trees is one of the things I always disliked. I had an intense dislike for it. Now, granted, here in single player, there are usually ways around it, pretty obvious ways, including the pine cone, cone glitch. Uh, but the one that I usually used was simply Bigfoot, where you ring the bell. Uh, in Reign of Giants, anyway, you could ring the old bell, and then that brings in the Bigfoot to you know, come and stomp down that area, which was the obvious and easy way to acquire, well, that was close, to acquire wood in the early parts of a game in Reign of Giants. Like this, obviously you can see how much damage the, the Bigfoot does. And that was a good way to get uh, wood. It was a good way to farm wood outside of Berger or I guess being somebody like Woody or Maxwell. So one of the other things I was interested in pointing out that when wearing the Spectre goggles, you'll have the ability to investigate items without needing a magnifying glass. So as you can see, Wagstaff has identified this suspicious tree without needing to make the magnifying glass from the treasure hunting tab. And it doesn't cost any durability this to the Spectre goggles either. Another benefit you'll notice here when using the Spectre goggles is in the pig ruins, you can see dangers that pop up. This also applies to other worlds like uh, swamps in uh, Don't Starve, Reign of Giants, or the those marsh, those tidal ponds in Shipwrecked. Pretty much any room that has hidden dangers in it, these Spectre goggles will point out. Sometimes they're a little bit glitchy and you might have to re-equip them when entering the ruin, but for the most part they seem to work. They'll also allow you to investigate these cracks in the walls down here in the ruins without needing a magnifying glass. You can find out which ones actually have something behind them. And that's a function of the Spectre goggles here as well. One of the last things that I want to bring your attention to here in regards to Wagstaff is 
how he changes when he takes a lot of damage. So as you can see here, I only have 27 health left and there's something fishy going on with Wagstaff. He has this kinetoscope type look to him, a very old grainy type film, which actually is kind of interesting if you take a look into the inventor Edison, who played like a pretty significant role in developing uh, some of the early prototypes for film anyway. I'm not going to do the subject justice by mentioning it here, but it's an interesting reference. And it also makes you kind of wonder what Wagstaff is really up to in this world. If you examine some more of his examination quotes and whatnot of different items in the world, he'll oftentimes break the fourth barrier. So this character has a lot more going for him than just other characters. It seems that he's in this world of his own accord and not by mere accident or mishap, uh, unlike a lot of other characters that are currently in Don't Starve. It also might be that this is actually just a projection of him in the world, and as you can see, he kind of loses his fidelity as he's about to get wiped out. This might not actually be the full Wagstaff. Either way, it's kind of interesting, the background that this, that this character has. It'll, it'll be curious to see what Clay decides to do with him in the future, or if this is actually all we get in terms of his story. So that's my overview here of Wagstaff and his abilities in Don't Starve Hamlet. Once again, you're going to need, at the moment, to enter in a special code to get access to the beta for Hamlet to uh, enable this character. He does not require any XP to unlock, though, once you have enabled it. And uh, so that's going to be it for today. Thank you very much for watching, as always, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>